Hey, it's your boy, Mike the Situation Sorrentino. Welcome to Statute of Limitations. It's the ultimate lineup. It's Crooks. This is not my fault that I stole this car. It's Conman. This is my chance. I can be rich for life. It's wannabe kingpins. We all made together $500,000. And queenpins. It was basically a lounge of criminals. <laughs> These are stories of the nonviolent lucky punks and Robin Hoods that dodge the law. I could have gone to prison, not jail, prison. Because here's the situation, baby. It's only a matter of time before the statute of limitations is up. And technically, you might walk away Got free, but don't take it from me, guys. I'm obviously no lawyer. <laughs> this is Statute of Limitations. What's up, everybody? I'm Mike, the situation Sorrentino. Welcome to the show where average folks talk about their over the top crimes they committed way back when. On this episode of Statute of Limitations, you'll see a goody two-shoes wannabe congresswoman who committed a crime straight out of Gone in 60 seconds, and a dude whose crime can be best described as Toy Story. He stole from the rich and gave to the poor. Meet our Robin Hood named Dave. Check it out. Hello, my name is Dave, and I committed a plethora of crimes. See, there was computer fraud, grand larceny, and just for a good measure, a little bit of trespassing. For 20 years, I've been waiting and waiting to talk about all these crimes that I committed. Now I'm gonna tell you all about it. So I was in college, I was super broke, and so every year I would get a seasonal job working at one of the big box toy stores, which had like electronics and TVs and Cabbage Patch Kids, you name it. So this store, like at the time, minimum wage was like nothing. It was like maybe four bucks and they would put you down to work all the hours. Like my work schedule just said December. And like, even with overtime, it was like six bucks. So you're like, great, thanks. I can supersize my fries now. So you get super bitter, super fast. You're not making any money. They're super, super cruel to these kids by jacking up these prices like astronomically. So this company is like making money hand over fist. I'm like, these families are like emptying their pocketbooks for like the next hot thing. They're just going broke, just trying to make their kids happy for the holidays. You know, dad's out in the parking lot doing like $3 scratchers, like hoping like, you know, Christmas is coming up, what am I gonna do? It was driving me nuts. And then I came up with the best idea. I got a chance to fix this. I figured out a way for everybody to get everything they wanted for the holidays, especially me. So this place during the holidays, total chaos, like trucks coming in, boxes flying everywhere. It was complete madness. Nobody had any idea where anything was. So remember, this was like a terrible neighborhood and there were like abandoned buildings everywhere, like empty warehouses and whatnot. And at the time I just started tinkering around with computers and I realized if I went into the system and just changed a couple numbers, I could take entire shipments and redirect them to anywhere I wanted. I could redirect those trucks and have them deliver all those boxes to one of those empty warehouses. So before I sent an entire shipment somewhere, I decided to take one video game console and have it sent just to test it out. It worked perfectly. Nobody had any idea. After that, I was like, what else can I get away with? So it started with one video game console, and then it went to like two boxes, five boxes, a van, a big old truck. I'm like, what else can I do? Can I do an entire like ship coming in from China? I figured sooner or later, somebody was gonna figure this out. So every single shipment was like down to a science for like in, out, a single hour, never use the same place twice. Fake name, like Al Jarreau. Like the guys who brought it in, like the truckers, whenever they're like, why are these guys hurrying so much? But whatever, they're truckers, they're busy too. I mean, some of the truckers were actually helping us unload the boxes themselves. Until one guy was like, looking at us kind of funny. 
So I slipped on the game console and he never said a word. So it was crazy. It was like kind of fun in the beginning, a little sneaky, or like one little Xbox. And all of a sudden I'm like renting the apartment next to mine, filling it full of boxes. My own place is filled with boxes. I got like stolen goods everywhere. They're like flying in. I mean, I was careful, but I was totally fearless. Was like nobody's ever going to catch me. At a certain point I was looking around like, I think I've got over a hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff. I could have gone to prison, not jail, prison. This is getting too big, too fast, completely out of control. And sooner or later, somebody's going to talk. I was pretty sure some of the other people I work with were catching on. By the way, all this time, I'm supposed to be doing my regular job. Like as I'm stealing like half the store, I'm also in the store working for these people doing my regular job. And then one day I show up to the office and there are two guys in shirt and tie who I don't know, totally freaked out. Like, this is it. Oh snap, Dave's got the suits in pursuit right now. And if you've ever shoplifted, not saying that I have ever personally, maybe I have, maybe I haven't, but I can tell you that store security, they don't play, okay? This dude is in way over his head, stealing toys. He's got a situation. Let's see how this plays out next on Statute of Limitations. We're back with Statute of Limitations. Our man Dave is working a holiday gig, decided to stuff the stocking with a warehouse full of game consoles. But with security hot on his heels, it might just be a wrap. Listen, security is always watching. Okay, guys, check this out. At a certain point, I was looking around like, I think I've got over $100,000 worth of stuff. I was pretty sure some of the other people I work with were catching on. And then one day, I show up to the office and there are two guys in shirt and tie who I don't know, totally freaked out. Like, this is it. The store holds an entire staff meeting. They bring us all in and they're not exactly like, pointing the finger at anyone, but they were saying, all this stuff is going missing. We got to figure this out. And that's when things completely went off the rails. I was starting to totally freak out. I was like, had crazy anxiety, couldn't sleep, totally terrified. I was like looking over my shoulder. It just got completely out of control. Just when I thought it couldn't get any worse, the assistant manager pulls me aside out of the blue and says, the manager thinks Somebody's stealing a bunch of stuff by changing all this stuff in the computer system. And I freaked out. I was like, I don't know anything. That's crazy. I, I'll keep my eye out. Meanwhile, the second he left, I went into the computers and just nuked everything. I was just like, delete, 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 delete. Like trying to erase all trace of anything I'd done. Here's the good news. They all thought I was an idiot. So they never suspected me. I just want to, I, I dropped my contact on the floor. And... Here's a great thing about not always coming off that smart. People think you're not smart enough to get away with that kind of stuff. I don't regret a thing, but this was the stupidest thing I could have possibly done. And if you ever think that you should do anything like this, don't, because it will actually mess with your mind for the rest of your life. And that's how I got away with all those crimes. Nobody got hurt. I mean, the company went out of business, but like, it's a company. But all the people, they got hooked up. And if you want to get hooked up, I still have a bunch of boxes in my house. And why am I talking like this? <laughs> Yo, Dave's number should be 1-800-LUCKY-CHOOCH because he could have gotten 12 long years in prison. I wonder if he has the old school tech mobile. What an amazing game that was. Check out this crime committed by a one-time sorority girl in Arizona. From an innocent, stylish sorority girl to a not-so-innocent criminal, whose style could have been an orange jumpsuit, meet Christine. My name is Christine, and in 2010, I was a college student in Phoenix, Arizona, and I took Grand Theft Auto to the next level. I was a poli-sci major. And I was really into student government. I was an activist, or I thought I was. My dream was to be a congresswoman. I had a picture of Elizabeth Warren on my wall in my dorm room. I was 
very, very much into it. I was in a sorority, I won't say which one, and I went to my sorority sisters and I said, we've gotta do something other than party once in a while. Can we please go to this women's march? And I kind of told some of them it was a good networking opportunity too. So I was able to get all of the sorority sisters together. This was around midterms, so we were really exhausted and tired, but I really wanted us to go to this march. We stayed up really late the night before the march. You know, we ran to the store, we got all the supplies, poster board, we got markers, we got paint, and we were making a ton of signs. And I was exhausted, we were all exhausted. And then my best friend, Britt, who was also my sorority sister, was like, well, you know, I have some Adderall and I can maybe share it with you. Well, I've never done Adderall before. I never took any kind of pick-me-up before. So I thought, well, what's the harm? You know, I'm really tired. And she said, yeah, it's just like a couple cups of coffee. You'll be fine. So I said, okay, give me one. So she gives me one and that kept me going through the whole night. We made all kinds of signs, equal pay, equal rights, equal pay for women. We went all out for the march. And the next morning, it was pretty early and we gathered all of the signs and everything to go to the march. And we all get into a couple different vans and we go to the march and she offers me another Adderall and I took it. And we were all just completely hyped up. So we get to the march, everyone's chanting, we have all of our signs, we are just, kind of getting a little bit rowdy. And as we're going down the march, we see actually some of the fraternity guys. They found out we were going to be there, went there to heckle us. So they're yelling at us, we're yelling back. Some of my sorority sisters are like flipping them off. They're getting just totally angry. So we're totally hyped up and, and it was really great. But then up ahead, we see like all of this commotion, we see like signs, like people are getting, like we could just hear a lot of people shouting. All of a sudden, I see these flashing lights, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. And I am freaking out, of course, because it's the police. And then I just hear a lot of shouting and I realize like people are getting shoved and pushed and I am starting to freak out. And then I notice my sorority sisters are freaking out and they start like pushing and shoving and all of a sudden I'm just in the middle of like this complete commotion so there's a million people and I see the police coming and they're arresting people and I'm freaking out okay because if I get arrested you know there goes all of my dreams of being a congresswoman and I am so scared so I grab Brit and I'm like we got to get out of here you know and we just take off running I'm pushing people out of the way um, I'm, I'm running through the crowd and we find this alley and we duck down the alley and as we're running down the alley and I'm I'm breathing heavy. I'm basically hyperventilating at this point. And then a cop car pulls up at the end of the alley and we duck behind a dumpster because, and I'm just, I'm crouched behind the dumpster and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, you know, uh, I don't, I don't want to go to jail. The two of these police officers jump out of the police car to, I guess, chase someone and they leave the doors open. So, I don't know if it was the excitement or the Adderall or what, but I stupidly think I'm gonna run to the police car. I'm just gonna jump in. I start running, Brit's yelling, what are you doing? And I'm like, get in the car, get in the car. <laughs> and um, so we, we jump in the car and we, we shut the doors and I, I couldn't believe it, but they actually left the keys in there, which look, this is not my fault that I stole this car if they left the keys in, right? So <laughs> anyway, I turn on the car and I, and, I, and I just take off because I just want to get out of there. So I floored the gas and I was gone. And then I'm driving down the street and Briz goes, you stole a cop car, you stole a cop car. And I'm like, duh, I know, I know. And then I don't know what to do. She's like, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get out of the car. And I'm like, we can't get out of the car now. Someone's gonna see us. And so I pull up and I flip on everything that I could find. The sirens start going off and I'm just driving and driving. And she's like, where are you going? And I'm like, I don't know. Britt's like, well, maybe we should pull over, you know, on the side of the road here. Maybe we should pull over um, in front of the 7-Eleven. And I'm like, are you crazy? There's, you know, cameras everywhere. 
and I'm we're, we're just driving and driving and you know I noticed you know all of the lights and everything sort of seemed like it was in slow motion like um, I wasn't even really there like it was a movie or something you know like we were Thelma and Louise all of a sudden Britt yells at me and she's like whoa slow down you know and I almost ran a stop sign as if it mattered that I ran a stop sign at that point and it finally dawned on us we have to get rid of this car because otherwise we're going to jail for the rest of our lives. Yo, Christine sorority letters should be G T A. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto. She stole a cop car and now she's in a rush to make a getaway. The story ships into high gear when we return on Statute of Limitations next. Welcome back to Statute of Limitations. Christine, a sorority girl, and a wannabe lawmaker, has turned into a full-on lawbreaker. She stole a cop car, and I know the cops like eating donuts, but I don't think they like people doing donuts, especially in their police car. Hey, how she's gonna get out of this jam? I don't know, guys. We're gonna have to check this out. We're just driving and driving and, you know, I noticed, you know, all of the lights and everything sort of seemed like it was in slow motion. Like, um, I wasn't even really there. Like it was a movie or something, you know, like we were Thelma and Louise. All of a sudden, Britt yells at me and she's like, whoa, slow down, you know, and I almost ran a stop sign as if it mattered that I ran a stop sign at that point. And it finally dawned on us, we have to get rid of this car because otherwise, we're going to jail for the rest of our lives. Now, Phoenix is kind of a weird city, right? So it's all of these big developments and you're driving and then all of a sudden you're just in the desert. So we're driving up this like really little rocky like road. It wasn't even really a road at that point. It was mostly, you know, dirt and sand and gravel. And I see this rock formation up ahead. So I decide I'm gonna pull around that and we're gonna park there and we pull up and we park and we open the doors and I stick my head out of the door and I'm looking around and all I see is like cacti. And we both, you know, crawl down out of the car and we like crawl in our bellies like maybe 10 feet before we actually stand up and we are covered in sand and dirt. And then we start walking and walking and it is the desert and it is Arizona and we are dripping with sweat. We had like one little water bottle between the two of us. We walked for hours. I swear I saw an oasis with a palm tree. I'm getting completely sunburned and Britt's face was a mess. I noticed a vulture was circling us. So I was like, um, we're gonna die out here. I wanna cry, but there's no more tears left because I was totally dehydrated. We finally make it back to campus and I am red as a beet. And I decide I have to like hide out. So I'm lying in bed that night after I stole the cop car and I, my skin is on fire. I threw a ton of aloe all over myself and I'm just laying there and then I realized I wasn't wearing gloves so they could find my fingerprints. So I text Britt and I was like, come here now. So she came over and I said, we have to go back. And she's like, are you crazy? You never go back to the scene of the crime. And I was like, well, we have to. We're driving through, every pile of sand looks the same. And I finally see a rock formation that I think looks pretty familiar. So I say, Britt, that's it, that's it. It's gotta be it. So we drive up this little hill and we go around the rock formation and there's the car. And I was like, thank you, nobody has found the car yet. I can't even believe it was still there, it was crazy. We wiped off every inch of that cop car. And I, I mean, I probably went over it like three or four times because I was so paranoid. I was like, we're, you know, we're gonna get caught. So we did that and I was trying to think, did, did I leave, you know, did I leave my DNA anywhere? You know, was there, was, did I leave a hair follicle, you know? I watch a lot of true crime, so. <laughs> So we get back to the dorm room and I made her swear, you can never tell anyone about this. So, sorry Britt, I told someone about this. But yeah. And then I waited in my dorm room with my fingers crossed, hoping that, you know, they did not find any fingerprints or 
I don't know, DNA or something like that. And um, yeah, they didn't. And no one said anything to me. I couldn't believe it. I was just so thankful. And uh, Britt never said anything to anyone. I never said anything to anyone. And we kind of all just pretended it didn't happen. But I never went back to another women's march. And I just kind of laid low at school for the rest of my time there. So I never went into politics. I'm not that much of a criminal. I'm in marketing and advertising. And that's my story. So in the end, Christine and the machine were both okay thanks to Arizona's statute of limitations. If she ever runs for office, she's got Big Daddy Sitch's vote. That does it for this episode of the show. I like the situation. Sorrentino, hope you all learned a valuable lesson today, which is if you commit the crime, just don't get caught. Genius, right? We've got plenty more incredible stories coming your way. You got the time? Well, we got the crime, guys. See you in the next installment of Statute of Limitations. Peace! We out. This program is for entertainment purposes only, and it is not legal advice. The Statute of Limitations are complicated and depend on many factors. If you need advice, you should seek legal counsel from a competent attorney in your jurisdiction.